Uh, well, firstly, I would like to thank uh, everyone uh, for joining our session today. Today, we have with us the team from Trapix, and our solution today is called Traffic Security. It's a deception grid or deception technology solution. Now, I, my name is Ashik Thomas. I'm the product manager from Bulwark and for Traffic as a solution. With us today, we have Nathan and Tony from the Trapix team who will go through us with the presentation as a demo for the solution as well. So thank you all for joining. Now quickly uh, with the agenda, the first point is basically what we're going to talk about is why deception, an introduction into deception technology, and also the benefits. We will talk about the references that we have so far, and then we will go into a technical demonstration on what deception and how it looks like from in a real-time perspective. And finally, what we'll do is we'll actually go into TrapX Flex, which is an industry first solution that has been presented by Trapix. And of course, our team will go through it as well. And finally, we'll have a quick QA to the session too. Now, uh, before the QA part, of course, our chat window is always open. So please do place your questions in the chat window. And our panelists, both Nathan and Tony, will take care of the questions at the end of our presentation. And also at the end of our presentation, also once you exit, there is a feedback form that we would like all of you to fill as well so that we can make sure that our presentations are better not just for our session today but also for the future sessions that we take care now before i move into traffic you know a little bit about where i'm from you know, so uh, the company that i represent is bulwark technologies we are an award-winning cyber security in the region we started our operations in 1999 and have successfully completed 20 years we represent about 22 plus vendors in the region and of course traffic being one of our favorites we operate in TCC as well as in India as well. We are proud to say that we have over 500 plus partners across the region. Now with Trapix, of course, our partnership started in 2019. We have a dedicated sales team, technical, and a marketing team for the same. So now I would like to hand it over to Tony from the Trapix team to take you through the rest of the session. Over to you, Tony. Thank you, Ashik, and good afternoon, everyone. So I just wanted to um, talk about why deception. Firstly, you know, deception technology automates the creation of traps. Some people call them decoys or lures, um, which are mixed among and within existing IT resources to provide a layer of protection to stop attackers and to allow us to remove attackers from the network. Uh, the traps are effectively IT assets that are e either real licensed operating systems or emulations. So what is it that these uh, technologies do? Well, there's two things, um, and this is one going to be discussed as part of the case studies, but um, what I think you'll really enjoy, as we know from the agenda today, is Nathan's going to show you this in action. So the first thing we do is we improve visibility. Um, there's a number of tools that are out in the cyber world, um, and a number of them are point solutions. So therefore, with deception, deception can be deployed across the entire estate. It can replicate all of the IT assets. So whether it's the solutions that we have out of the box or with TrapX first around our custom capability, we can create a trap to replicate any part of the network the cloud environment, the endpoints, and therefore we're able to disperse across the entire network. So we give that visibility. But with that visibility, we also give an early warning. So with many of the tools that are in the marketplace at the moment, they're working on big data. So they're working on AI and analyzing the amount of data, and that is creating a huge volume of, of false positives. But with deception, it's very binary. If, for example, we create a swift uh, emulated trap that's in a financial services environment, or whether it's a medical device, or whether it's a piece of OT equipment in uh, an oil environment, then as soon as that trap is touched, once we've whitelisted and taken out all the activity that's on the network. If that trap is then uh, touched, it creates the high fidelity alert. And that's the one thing that deception is able to provide for our customers. 
But why CRAPEX? Well, I touched on emulations. That's one of the things that we have as unique to our solution, and we can create any device on a customer network. But we also know um, we're unmatched in terms of the volume that we can deploy, but also how quickly we can do that. And we'll touch on that as part of the demonstration. We have least complexity in the deception market because of our agentless uh, solution. And we also have a very low infrastructure cost. Uh, essentially, you just need TSOC, which is the management platform, and you need an appliance. And within a couple of hours, you can have a customer up and running. And then finally, as I touched on this, our unique is the ability to create any device that the customer has on their network. So that's why TrapEx. But if you're our partner community, we want you to be able to sell the solution. So what's in it for you? Firstly, we have a deal registration process, and Ashik will share that separately. We have very good margin. Uh, we have a very quick POC process, and uh, our success rate between myself and Nathan has been uh, 80%. So four out of the five opportunities that we have got to proof of concept, we've been able to close on a consistent basis. So that means it's it's effectively good value for you to get behind the solution. And then finally, the uh, fourth piece, we've introduced uh, an incentive. Um, she will share this separately. For those who want to be part of the TRAPEX partnership, reach out after this presentation. Uh, we'll share the details of what that incentive is. Essentially, it's gonna be around getting POCs uh, live, uh, because obviously, as we know, we'll convert those and we're putting some uh, money behind that to help you do that as well. So uh, let's talk about some of the references, as, as the agenda said. Uh, Bill and uh, Costas, who you can see at the bottom here, uh, Bill runs the Security Operations Centre and Costas is the CISO for Procter & Gamble. So uh, one of the largest deployments in Deception, over 200 sites. Um, effectively, both in the IT environment and the OT environment, um, both Bill and Costas are, are very uh, positive in terms of what the value of the solution is. You can see these are actually quotes that uh, Bill has provided. Um, now, if uh, after this presentation you were to click on the link, there's a YouTube link there at the top of the slide. I've taken these quotes from. Uh, the reference, but there's many more in that recorded session. It's Bill, a customer, uh, talking about the challenges that they had, uh, why deception was the right solution, and more importantly, why TrapEx was the right solution. And we also have some collateral uh, that Nathan's just showing there on the right hand side. And again, that can be shared after the presentation. But we've got many more case studies. This is healthcare. And again, that crossed both the IT environment and the OT environment. And really, it was about the speed, the visibility, and the high fidelity alerts that we provided. But if we move on to, uh, we've got many customers, and we've got customers across all verticals. We've got some really interesting and exciting use cases. So how Deception is integrated with things like Cisco, with Forescout, uh, with McAfee, with Checkpoint, uh, the broad ecosystem of our solution is, is very comprehensive, but some of the use cases we can build are, are around the customers and their environments, but we'd love to do that as part of the trial. So next slide, please. Um, for any of you who want some more proof points around deception, there's many analysts who have got behind Deception as a technology. I think Gartner are probably the most recognized, and these two analysts, Gorka and uh, Reg Preet, uh, did a very interesting report uh, last year around how to improve your threat detection with deception. Um, I think some of the uh, key findings, the ones that highlight are the, the most interesting for me, is that, you know, with a lot of the traditional tools, the defender has to be right. 100% of the time, but the attacker just has to be right once. And that's 
the case with a lot of the traditional tools that are out in the market, and that's why we're still seeing organizations being penetrated. But with deception, this turns the model on its head. Now the attacker has to be right 100% of the time because they don't know whether it's a real SAP server or a trap, whether it's a real Swift server or a trap or a real VPN device or, or a networking device or a Windows server. So the beauty is the defender doesn't have to be right 100% of the time. It's the attacker that has to. And that's where the model is really uh, turned on its head. And that's where I think customers see the, the unique value. Next slide. But Trapix has won some great awards. Uh, the, the one I'm showing on the left is a uh, number of CISOs. Uh, they praise the solution for its innovation, its ease of use, and its importance to, to the business. Um, SC Magazine uh, did a really deep dive on version 6.3, and we got five out of five. Um, that was also updated, so that was back in uh, September of 2019, but in September of this year, uh, we've had 7.1, uh, sorry, 7.0 reviewed, uh, and you can see that if you uh, look that up. And again, um, they called out the custom capability that we had as a unique, um, the fact that we had a, an extensive list of third party connectors um, and that we could effectively emulate uh, any device across the network. Uh, to create a trap. So moving on. Uh, and finally, in, in Q1 of this year, um, there isn't a Gartner Magic Quadrant, but uh, uh, an independent body did uh, analysis of a number of the technologies in the marketplace, and Trapex came out as, as a leader. And they made some really interesting comments, uh, again, around the number of traps, the, the fact that we could do that at scale, um, the fact that we had a very low infrastructure cost, uh, that we had our custom capability and, and also our deception net, uh, which is really interesting. And we'll, we'll touch on that as part of the attack intelligence that Nathan's going to show you in the demonstration as well. So moving on, I'll hand over to Nathan. Uh, I'm sure you're going to be excited to see this live. The proof is always in the pudding, as they say, here in uh, the UK, but uh, we're excited to show you this in action. So good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, Nathan here. I have uh, just one slide to show before we go into the demonstration. Um, this really is just to set the scene in terms of the architecture for Deception Grid. Um, Tony mentioned uh, that we have a quite simple architecture, and indeed, hopefully that will come through in this slide, but also when we go into the live demonstration. Um, there's really two main components for our solution. And the first one is at the top of the screen here, you see the Security Operations Console. Uh, this is TSOC. Uh, so um, TSOC is essentially a management platform. It's the web GUI interface into uh, all parts of the Trapex solution. This is actually deployed um, as a virtual machine and is available as a, a template for all of the most popular hypervisor platforms. Um, VMware ESXi is the most popular for us, but we do also support KVM, Hyper-V. We can deploy into AWS and Azure as well. So quite a bit of flexibility here. Um, the TSOC is very straightforward to deploy. Um, from the moment you power it on in your hypervisor and give it an IP address, we're virtually ready to go. So um, really straightforward. The second part of our solution is in the middle of the screen here is the appliance. And the appliance in most scenarios with our clients would also be a virtual machine. Although we do have physical appliances that can be deployed into data centers. So standard rack mount servers for our client data centers. Um, but we also do support a fanless um, ruggedized appliance, which can go into um, locations such as oil fields and uh, factory floors and that sort of thing. So lots of options are available. Regardless of how you uh, deploy that, they all provide the same function. The appliance's role is to uh, deploy decoys on the network. And these decoys are all built within the appliance uh, system itself and 
every appliance can have 512 decoys or traps. And those 512 decoys can uh, exist either in a single network or they can be spread across multiple VLANs. And the appliance itself has the ability to support um, both scenarios. So it's a very flexible uh, product um, to distribute your traps or your decoys across your network without increasing the footprint of the network and without requiring any additional hypervisor licensing or indeed any operating system licensing. So what I mean by that is I could, if I wanted to deploy 500 Windows traps that will respond like a Windows server on the network, but actually they are only emulations. So they don't really exist as a real server, but we respond like we're a SMB file share or a um, an FTP server or um, an AD um, controller, that sort of thing. So we can create these emulations. They can be located on the appliance and um, each emulation takes less than five minutes to actually create from scratch. And I'll show you an example live on our demonstration. What's interesting to say here is the appliance itself can also support non-IT assets. So, um, of course, we have Windows, Linux, um, Windows endpoints uh, emulations, but we also have OT devices such as SCADA systems, so PCLs, um, you know, things to find in a process automation plant, uh, where you have devices that would emulate uh, network gear. So we can have a switch switching fabric. Um, that looks and feels like a real Cisco switch, for example, but of course is completely uh, fake. Uh, all, all, all of that lives on the appliance. These are what we call the emulations. But to complete our solution, we do have some additional components. And the first one on the left-hand side is what often is called honey tokens or bait or breadcrumbs, uh, lures. It doesn't really matter what you call it. The, the objective is the same, and that is to divert attackers away from real employee assets. So this would be laptops and desktops of real uh, users or indeed real servers. And um, these are small um, artifacts that we would deposit onto endpoints. And those endpoints would then um, allow the attacker to see these small artifacts and divert them to the traps on the appliance. So some simple examples would be, um, we could edit the host file of, host, host file of the uh, local machine and put some IPs and some uh, comments in the host file to indicate that a certain IP address is actually the payroll server. And of course, if anything touches that payroll server, it's actually a trap and the trap would actually alert the SOC. Um, but we also have more complex breadcrumbs and uh, bait, such as uh, leaving fake credentials on a machine's credential store or uh, altering some of the browsing history of a machine or adding some safe sessions into applications like Putty. So there are lots of uh, options available for using the bait technology. But um, it's really important to note here that this is an agentless solution, which means we do not require any uh, software to be running on those machines that are out there in the field. Uh, what we do have is a very simple um, script, which would be delivered as part of um, the, uh, in the, the organization's uh, software distribution tool, which would be SCCM, Intune, et cetera, et cetera. The other option we also have here on the right-hand side is FullOS traps. And FullOS traps actually is the only point we require an additional license from the customer. And this would be where we would uh, ask the customer to provide a, a gold image of their Windows server, Windows endpoint. And um, once we have that image running on VM, let's say, um, we then provide an agent and the agent would be installed on top, and the agent would then essentially provide a forensic seal around this machine, and anything that happens moving forward is reported back into the TSOC. And the reason you might want to do this is uh, perhaps uh, you want to engage with the attacker at a much more deeper level than you would do on an emulation. 
So you want to gather more intelligence of the techniques and tactics, um, or you might have a application which is difficult to emulate. So this could be quite a bespoke application, and you want to understand if the application is vulnerable, and if it is, what the attacker is trying to do. So FullOS has got a role to play. Um, all these three things along the bottom is what completes our uh, deception deployment strategy, and that's all inclusive uh, in the um, subscription. But we also have a very strong ecosystem uh, that lets us plug into um, some of our friends and family in the security space. So for example, sandboxing with McAfee or Cisco, um, all of the SIM vendors plugging in so we can uh, send our alerts into the uh, customer's SOC platforms, and uh, also uh, some remediation tools like network um, access control from Forescout or from uh, Fortinet uh, and these sorts of things. So we'll, I'll show you some examples of those on the real system as we go in. And the final piece to mention here is every single appliance that we deploy on the network has the ability to also act as a packet sniffing device. And it's a very powerful feature of every appliance. It This allows us to uh, notify of any outbound traffic that could be potentially calling home. And we can send an alert to the SOC uh, via the TSOC. So um, that's the architecture of the solution. What I would do is actually connect into a live platform. And here we have the dashboard of the main uh, TSOC. This is uh, what you would see essentially if you had just deployed our solution and you just connected onto the uh, URL of the uh, TSOC. So the main dashboard, as you can see, um, looks quite easy to navigate. Uh, on my, in my example, I have a, a summary of the traps that I have deployed out in the field. And as this is a demonstration box, you can see I've got various different styles of traps, including um, some familiar ones. So I have some Mac OS, Windows, and some Linux devices. And there may be some unfamiliar ones, such as um, SAP. Um, I have a Siemens device out there for an OT demonstration. And we also have some specific uh, financial services traps here for Swift. Uh, and so on. So that's a summary of what's out there. We're going to look at that in a little bit more detail um, as we go through. Um, at the moment, for today, I'm showing there's been zero events arrive on my TSOC, uh, but don't worry, we're going to start to uh, attack some of the traps shortly. Um, here we have a severity level score really from very low scan events through to uh, much more serious infections, and we'll see this thing light up shortly. Um, this one here with the network intelligence events uh, is actually the um, packet sniffer we have on the appliance. So if that's plugged into a, a egress point, it will also record anything that's uh, calling calling outbound as well. And then um, really most things on the TSOC are managed under the appliances section over here. And we'll see that we have one appliance in my uh, department called demonstration, which is here. And if I connect to this appliance, you'll see that um, I have all my traps running on here. Um, and actually, the only real resource we require from the customer is IP addresses. So to create a trap, I need an IP address. And that's really it. And the way that I would do that um, is um, I can do a manual wizard, which we'll do for the purposes of this demonstration. Uh, I could actually automate this via some asset discovery or third-party inventory that can plug into systems like um, a Forescout database or an AD. Um, or I could just scan the network and find out what's out there and then tell you what I'd recommend to deploy as your traps. But I'm going to do the manual version so that you can actually uh, see um, something. And uh, what I will do... Uh, is create a trap called Nathan Trap One, and uh, you can see here I have some IP addresses. I'm just going to take the first one in my list, which is IP address 71. And here is the first piece where I can start to customize what my trap would actually look like. Um, we can come back to these things later on, but I can 
give this a host name so it fits in with my network structure. So it blends in. Um, and of course, um, my TSOC in my example is actually connected into an Active Directory server. So I'm actually on the, on the, uh, the corporate domain, as it were, on here. I walk through my wizard. This is the nice, uh, the nice piece of the solution. Uh, it actually, you can just choose uh, the type of trap you want to deploy based on a template. So um, let's suppose if I was in the financial services, I could easily deploy a Swift web platform, or I could pretend to be an ATM if I wanted to. Um, I could, in my industrial category, select an uh, SAP server or a SCADA device, and then we'll actually uh, exist in the network and we would uh, be operating Modbus and D, uh, DMP3 and, and so on. So um, they are very specific to their industry uh, devices here. But if I'm in the medical sector, then really what I would be interested in is um, are my critical systems like my CT scanners under attack? And of course, most of those systems are using embedded XP. And exactly is what that would happen here is we'd deploy a uh, pretend fake CT scanner that looks and feels like the real thing. So there are lots of options here. What I will do quickly is show you a, a server uh, deployment. And if I click on Windows Server in my example, I can walk through here. And really, this is the point where I can start customizing what this decoy is going to look like. So first of all is the fingerprint of this machine. So um, am I going to be a old 2003 server that's running a legacy application and uh you know still important to my my uh network but um i want to know if that is being targeted from the attacker or is it a more modern 2012 or 2016 server i'm going to just do 2012 r2 um, for this purpose and we can then determine which services on the network we're going to respond to um, should we be probed prodded attacked uh, etc um so if I just take the uh, default settings, click on apply, and um, click on finish, what we'll see here is um, if I go on to um, my next screen, uh, Nathan Trap is now available. So this IP address is now on my network and will respond to anything that's configured on that service. So if you remember, if you were looking at the screen, uh, I had uh, FTP, SMB uh, enabled. Um, what I can do is quickly check that uh, the machine is indeed there. So if I ping it, it responds. So um, five minutes ago, this, this uh, machine was not there. So if you can imagine, what you've just done here, you've deployed a Windows 2012 R2 uh, machine or an IP address with about five or six different services running on it. Um, and you've not had to lift a single ISO CD or uh, look for any licensing. Um, so uh, that machine has responded to a PIP. But of course, as you would expect, um, something on my dashboard would have probably lit up because that trap has actually been touched. If I click on my today's view, uh, we'll wait for that to arrive. It should arrive here shortly as a, as a scan down here. Uh, let's click on analysis. It might have arrived already. And while it's doing that, uh, there it is. Oh, Windows, oh, here we go. Um, you can see I have a scan event. Uh, this is classed as a low severity. Uh, the attacker's IP address is uh, 200, that's my laptop. I've touched the trap called Nathan Trap 1. <clears throat> and uh, the protocols are ping, as you saw, I did a ping. Um, and not much detail here because it's just a simple ping, but we recorded that a response uh, was sent to the ping four times. So it's a very simple example of a trap that's been touched. Of course, if this was an Nmap scan, there'd be a lot more data here because it'd be much more intensive and we'll be collecting much more information that's relevant to the SOC team. Um, what I can do now is just uh, maybe up that a notch. And here you can see I'm now FTPing to the server. And what I get now is a response saying, uh, this is a Microsoft FTP service. That's the default setting for a Microsoft server when you create an FTP service. 
And um, maybe I've scanned this machine and um, detected that there is no authentication on it. And um, indeed, it lets me in. And I'm now connecting to this FTP server. So quite simple, again, quite simple um, task that I've executed here. If I go to my uh, refresh my analysis over here, we can now see it, this is no longer a scan event. This is actually a connection. So the severity has increased slightly because somebody's actually no longer just saying, hello, are you out there? It is now saying, um, do you let me connect? And indeed, you can see here that we've captured the attacker coming in over anonymous connection to that trap. And of course, that trap, again, uh, didn't exist a few minutes ago. So uh, you can see how the, the, the ease of which I can um, create um, something on, on the network. What I'll do um, quickly here is actually move into my FTP client. And um, I do have a, um, a trap I built uh, prior to the session, just to make it a bit, bit quicker to see. Um, on, on IP address 81, actually, this uh, trap, again, is a file transfer server on the Windows platform. Um, what I did here from a security defense so the SOC team, for example, I created some fake data on the trap because, of course, the, from the attacker's perspective, if I'm doing a reconnaissance on your network, if I find an IP address and I connect to it and then I discover that the port 21 is available, so FTP, and I connect to FTP, uh, first of all, it's given me anonymous logon, which is a big signal that that's probably uh, not... not uh, legitimate, but um, if I get to that server and there's nothing there, then um, that could indicate that that might be a decoy on my net on that network. So the idea here is the TSOC lets the administrator upload a structure to the decoy. So um, what I have here is some folders, which I've created that fit into my network uh, sort of architecture, let's say. And on this, I've also got um, some files that I've uploaded, which would be completely false information. So this file here is a partner list .xls, which is uh, quite relevant for this discussion. Um, but of course, inside this list would be completely false information. However, I don't know that as the attacker, but I can go and grab that file. So I bring that down to my local machine. And there it is, it's come down. Um, but um, what happens if the attacker wants to uh, leave me uh, a little present. And here I can upload a file. You can see this going up at the moment, so that'll take a few seconds. Um, this is an executable uh, file, which the file name ransomware.exe. It's just loads up, and here it is on my trap. Uh, so it's 8 meg. Um, and if I um, uh, go back to my analysis dashboard, let's see what's been going on. Uh, while these actual actions have been uh, taking place. Now, the severity has increased. So I've got a high alert here because I, the, the attacker is no longer connecting to the um, the trap and just uh, connecting to see if I get a response. He's actually doing something. So you can see here that I have an interaction, same attacker, different trap. This is the one I made earlier. Uh, FTP on port 21. This is currently in progress, which means the uh, FTP client is still connected. If I open up this one, what do I get? So let's see. So first of all, much more information now in my analysis, which the SOC team would see. Um, I can um, scroll down through this and you'll see that we're capturing the login event. We're capturing the attacker going into a customer folder, um, a customer data folder. And we can see he retrieved, as in downloaded, a file called uh, partnerlist.xls that's been downloaded to um, the attacker's machine. So it's essentially a, a loss of data from your uh, network. As far as the attacker is concerned, I'm getting your crown jewels. But of course, from a defender's perspective, you gave me some fake data. And if I then scroll down, you can see that he also uploaded a file to the trap and we've um, recorded that event. Now, we don't just record it and say, okay, we've seen a file name here called ransomware. Uh, we do a couple of things here. Uh, we grab the MD5 of that file um, and we can send that to 
Um, in our example, we have an integration here with virus total. So we send that to virus total and say, um, have you seen this uh, hash before? And give me a score against it. And the second thing we do is we also send it to a sandbox. So we can explode that file in and give you a result. Now, in the um, TSOC, we have, as we mentioned before, a very strong ecosystem of partner integrations. Every single customer of the Deception Solution has the option to use the um, Trapex sandbox, which is actually a McAfee sandbox, and it's in our cloud. And this option just has to be turned on here. What will happen is the ransomware.exe in this example would be captured and sent securely to the sandbox, exploded, and then a report would be given down to the TSOC once it's finished. So in my analysis section, I have a tab here for forensics. And the forensics is where you'd look at the process of uh, the file being uploaded uh, and so on. So you capture the file and the um, and the hash, and you can download the analysis reports when they finish. They take a little time because they're being live, blown up into the sandbox in the cloud. But if you notice on that ecosystem, <clears throat> we also um, have the virus total here, um, which is essentially an API key into the virus total cloud. Uh, those are free to create. Uh, that will also give you additional um, detection information into the TSOC. You, you saw that the sandbox has other options here, so I can also use my customer preferred sandbox. And if the sandbox the customer has is not here, then we also have the API, which allows us to uh, use third-party solutions. One of the biggest um, functions of our ecosystem, aside from obviously doing the SIM integration, which is very straightforward with the syslog, um, and on syslog, you can determine what events you want to send over, so they can be the highest events only or all events. Um, we do have a uh, integration uh, here, which enables us to, um, if we detect a threat on an endpoint, and it could be we've detected ransomware, for example, <clears throat> we can actually initiate in an in example here, a Forescout API call, and we can connect into the Forescout um, counteract platform in this example, and say, okay, we've got an infection going on, let's divert or at least notify Forescout and then Forescout can then either, uh, you know, do the remediation, move that machine into a different VLAN and quarantine VLAN and so on. So we do play a role in the remediation stage. Um, so you've seen how quick and easy it is to create the traps. Um, we don't just have the straightforward IT services, as it were, um, we have the ability to do some weird and wonderful things. Um, I will just do a very, very quick uh, trap here, uh, IP address 72. And um, I'm just going to choose a networking device in my example and choose a Cisco switch, uh, quite a common uh, platform out there. I'm gonna enable the web managed uh, option, which means I can connect into the Cisco GUI on that switch and in less than literally less than five minutes here um, I will have access to a decoy on my network which will be on my second page here IP address 72 uh, and if I grab that pop up here pop the IP address now I get a prompt to log in let's try Cisco and Cisco uh, I'm now looking at a Cisco GUI front end um, of a uh, catalyst switch. Again, wasn't deployed previously. And as if I'm an attacker, I've done a scan on your network and found some responses to what looked to be a Cisco protocols. Um, I then connect under my uh, GUI here. I can see that I can browse around this device. Like it's a real switch. I can change things turn things on, turn things off. Um, but um, what I really want from an attacker's perspective um, is to get root into the shell. So let's try that and uh, remove those. And I can connect into the shell. And now I'm in a Cisco switch and I can go into enable mode 
and start doing my attack on that switch. But of course, um, it's all a complete waste of time because the more I get spent burning my time on that, um, it doesn't really matter because of course, what the SOC are aware of is there's a interaction going on right now on SSH on a trap. And you can see that I came in using username Cisco, <coughs> a default um, password, and I opened a shell and I went into enable mode. And I'm about to do my damage on that machine, but of course it's all uh, in, a, in a fake device. Um, so again, it's very, very simple to do. I've not had to go to any networking teams. I've just had to get my IP address and deploy that trap on that machine. And very quickly, I'm just going to very quickly <laughs> flip into a Windows 10 machine here. And this Windows 10 machine is to be viewed as a real employee's machine that is currently running some breadcrumbs. So the idea here is if this machine was compromised, um, there are things on this machine which will divert the attacker to traps so you can be identified that there is a, a problem on the network. Now, as I mentioned, there are some simple things we do. Uh, again, this is all agentless. I can, um, I can uh, edit the host file of this machine. Um, uh, most normal users probably wouldn't know how to get to it. Uh, I've just created a shortcut to it to make it easy. But you can see here, there are IP addresses in the host file which have been added um, by the um, TSOC. Um, again, this is agentless, so I've added uh, links to a domain controller, a Ansible server, a Swift front end, a Lexmark printer, an SAP server. These are all traps on my appliance. Those are all traps. So there's the first part of my reconnaissance on the machine. This machine's got access to some IPs that could be uh, interesting. Let me understand what the browser knows. So if I go to my browser, I can see there are some uh, bookmarks here, and uh, there's one for Employee Portal, Swift Admin, and SAP GUI. Let me just click on one of those. This is taking me to a Swift front end, and uh, this IP address is a trap. This is a trap that's running on the appliance. And um, so that's uh, in interesting information there. Uh, what else can I find in here? Well, I've got a file that's hidden here. There's a spreadsheet that's hidden. It's called Really Secret Stuff. Um, so I could open that file. Let's give that a go. Okay, Really Secret Stuff. There's loads of information, customer data here. Uh, so this is actually what we call a deceptive file. This is um, how we enhance uh, DLP. This file that I just opened is going to ping a trap and say I've been opened. This file will ping a trap even if it's taken off the network. So you could hide this file somewhere quite discreet. And if it gets moved, opened, on on network, off network, it would call home and say I've been opened. Uh, it's quite nice. Um, I mentioned that we do mess around with the credential store. And in my example here, these credentials are have been inserted by TSOC on this endpoint to um, convince somebody that I could actually go to a terminal server on this IP address and we would respond to them. Uh, these are all fake credentials. They don't work, but they will be logged on the system. And you can also get your SIM to track those. Um, so lots of, things, lots of things we do, there's much more we can do. And as you know, we don't have, we don't have the time to uh, show all of those things. Um, but, um, but just before we go back to the slides, I'm just going to, uh, run a couple of attacks from my attack server over here. This is my Kali attack server. Um, what I want to do first is potentially um, run a vulnerability on, no, sorry, run a, um, uh, I want to check if your AD is vulnerable. So what I'm doing is I'm making an LDAP request on the network to an IP address that's responded to me that I've already identified as being an LDAP server. This is a trap. This is not a real server. Um, so it's recorded the LDAP um, uh, as being available in this example. Um, another one I might do is um, run a um, eternal blue type thing, like a vulnerability scan on a trap or, or on an IP address to make sure it's uh, vulnerable. Here, I've got a response saying this IP address is vulnerable, um, which is interesting. And or you might also have in the background uh, something like a, um, responder attack um, on the network. So 
um, one of the things that we do is we generate um, fake traffic from traps to make the traps look real. So this um, responder is waiting on the network to poison traffic, what it believes is real traffic, but is completely fake. Um, and what our traps will do is actually feed it some fake data to give the impression that we are uh, vulnerable and we have some important information to share with you. Um, so those th things have been running. And of course, we had um, a lot of things going on on the Windows 10 machine. So our dashboard should have captured a lot more stuff. So you can see now, the one at the top is quite um, quite severe, an infection. And that's infection on under SMB. So what's happened is that uh, attack from that Kali machine has been running. And you can see here, I've got a eternal blue uh, alert that um, something's trying to see whether we are exploitable using eternal blue. And you can see here, they're trying to connect under the username guest on the domain Wiccan. And all of this is part of the deception um, campaign. So I'm going to stop there from the demo. And um, I'm just going to flip back into the um, final parts of the slide before we go into the, um, the Q&A. So back over to Tony. Fantastic. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, really detailed presentation and just shows how comprehensive the uh, deception solution from Traplex is. Um, what I did want to just finish off only in a couple of minutes because we want to give 10 minutes for questions is um, we're continually developing uh, the product here at Trapex, and we're super excited. At, you know, very recently, we just launched our uh, first in the industry, which is deception as a service. Um, what we wanted to introduce is, uh, which you'll see on the on the next slide, a uh, a remote uh, service for our home workers and uh, employees working from home. Uh, Nathan, if we can just move to the next slide and fill that out. Uh, essentially, what we have, and I'll talk you through this very quickly, um, we have a hosted service in AWS so that we can deploy at scale quickly and make it very cost effective for customers to join and also to trial the service, by the way. So you could take a number of, of these and share these with your customers so that they could test this for remote workers. But essentially what we're doing is the deceptive um, token that Nathan talked about um, is being deployed to an endpoint. Um, it's been deployed remotely using uh, Intune or SCCM or GPO or associated tools. And it is effectively um, looking for three things, uh, an attacker who's potentially coming in via a VPN, uh, an attacker who is looking for files you know, password, confidential, intellectual property files that would be hidden on that remote laptop. Or thirdly, uh, someone who might be looking at uh, accessing the intranet. So we're creating those decoys on the endpoint for the attacker to uh, attempt to uh, interact with and obviously immediately create that high fidelity alert. And in essence, that's the service. Uh, and it can be up and running in minutes uh, and you control that. So it's one component of the overall uh, deception grid, uh, but we're offering that as a service and a first to market. So again, love to send you some more details on that following this session. Uh, we've also done two recordings, uh, one of Nathan's session uh, for the overall deception grid to get you familiar with it and a quick overview of Flex as well for your review after this session. Hopefully we've shown you in what is a very short window, certainly 25 minutes on Nathan's session, uh, we can show a customer and in fact, how easy it was to demonstrate, it really is that easy to have a customer up and running, which makes us probably one of the most cost effective uh, solutions in the marketplace for deception with probably the most comprehensive solution. So hopefully you'll take us up on the option, getting some customers on board uh, and trialing the solution uh, and taking advantage of the uh, commercial offer as well. Thank you everyone for your time today. Uh, thanks a lot, Tony and Nathan. Thank you guys for the session. Uh, if you guys, uh, Tony, if you could just look into your uh, chat window, there are a couple of questions. 
that have come across. It would be great if you could get to answer them. Yeah, fantastic. How is Trapix against uh, our competitive solution? Well, uh, I think in, in a few minutes, we probably wouldn't uh, do it justice uh, against uh, the likes of Ativo. Uh, I never like to um, undermine uh, our deceptive um, com uh, competitive solutions, but I think there are a number of core differences. Um, you know, that certainly from the commercial standpoint, uh, we're, we're, we're stronger. Uh, and that has to do with uh, a number of things that Nathan talked about, the way it's licensed, the ease of deployment, the simplicity of the solution, uh, the emulations. Obviously, we own the patents for the emulations and the fact that we can do custom patents. So, for example, uh, if you take sensitive areas where it might be financial services environments where they won't deploy uh, cyber technology solutions because uh, there is a legacy environment. They don't want a technology touching that environment because it could impact in the operation. We've seen that in manufacturing in just in time. We effectively can deploy because of the agentless solution, and that makes us unique and different to uh, to our competition. So that's certainly one uh, differential. But if um, anyone would like a, a more detailed discussion one on one. Obviously, I'd love to be able to share that. So happy to do that as well. Okay, next one on the list. Uh, references in the UAE. Yeah, certainly we have references. Um, obviously, how we, we operate, we under NDA. Uh, so if uh, we engage with you as, as reseller, what we'll do, we'll get that all uh, finalized. And yeah, we can share some of the references that we have in region. Be happy to, and I know some of those customers would also be be happy to uh, speak to you as well. So no problems there. Can we have a soft copy of the slides? Absolutely, we'll share that after the event. Uh, yeah, we'd love you to fill in the feedback form. Uh, licensing model. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So. Uh, the the beauty of Trapex is it's licensed uh, very easily in terms of the number of VLANs. Uh, the price per VLAN is public, and then you have your discount, and I'll share that as part of this presentation. Um, effectively, you have unlimited use of the product, so uh, some of the competition has modules. We incorporate everything in as part of the pricing, and then you just license the number of VLANs to the customer requirements. So if there is a challenge from a budgeting perspective, the beauty is we can fit within that. Um, it just means that we incorporate the number of VLANs to give them the coverage that they need. Uh, so again, we've got flexibility there. Thanks so much, Tony. Uh, definitely what I'll do is as a part, uh, I think uh, we, I will just speak with the partners that have come on to the session and definitely if there are any questions, I will redirect them to you. And of course, you know, let's we we'll start uh, moving. You know, I'll speak to the partners of come for our session today, and we can take things forward from there. Wonderful. Well, um, good. You know, thank you everyone this afternoon for your time. We really appreciate it. We look forward to working with you. Um, I think we'll support you uh, successfully in winning some business together. Um, Ashik and everyone from Bulwark, thank you very much for hosting this, and. Uh, we hope you have a, an enjoyable afternoon and uh, week ahead.